Okay. Next, let me continue with the constant qualifier for for uh, with pointers. Okay. Constant qualifier. Mm. If you if you define um because you know about uh, the pointer, right? You can pass pointer to function, and sometimes the variables cannot be changed, and we use constant if function does not need to change a variable. Okay, if you just pass the address, right, and you don't want to change anything, you want to change the variable, right? You can use constant function, a uh, constant qualifier in the formal parameters in the function, right? Attempting to change, if you want to change the constant, this constant variable, it will show you an error, okay? So, Sometimes constant qualifier is very useful. Okay, let me show you like this. Um, constant power or pointers point to a constant memory location. Constant memory location means you cannot change the value of the address of this value. It has to be fixed. It must be initialized when defined. When you want to use constant, right? You have to use integer star constant my pointer and my pointer will be a fix let me say like this constant mean fix you fix the memory address of x right x will be my pointer will be the address of x only this one type integer star constant is a constant pointer to an integer this integer Constant integer my pointer is equal to ampersand x. Modifiable pointer to a constant integer. This one can be the pointer can be changed. This one. If you define constant integer. And star constant pointer, pointer constant, okay? So constant pointer to constant integer, right? X itself can be changed, but PTR cannot be changed. X itself means X is a variable, right? So the value of X can be changed, but pointer will be fixed, okay? We can use this kinds of the constant in the place of the in a function, okay. Suppose we start from this. This example, character star SPTR. This one is a string, an right? array of character or pointer to character, pointer to character will be more or less like a string. Okay, both SPGR and SATA, SPGR, SPGR, this one, we don't have constant, right? They can be modifiable. Okay, in this case, when you define string character like this, right? And you depend this, and then you use the convert to this function is a function to convert uppercase convert the string to uppercase okay <coughs> this function is quite complicated and I will talk about this later, but you know that this one is a function that will, if we put a string as an argument and it will return and it will change the value of this character into a capital letter. Right. In this function, it can simply do while loop, right? Star SPTR is equal to the first character of this string SPTR. 
if it not equal to backslash zero, you have known that the the setting we have to end a setting we have to end up with the now character or backslash zero, right? So when you when the pointer to a character of the string is not equal to backslash zero, then you have to use function to upper. Function to upper means it will convert from a, a character into an uppercase character. For example, A will be convert to capital A. Capital A will be, will not convert, it will be A, okay? To upper, and then this one. And you can see that plus plus SPTR. What does this mean? This means pointer will be uh will move to the next character. Just remember like this. Plus plus SPTR means you move to the next character and then you go back to while loop and check whether it is the backslash zero or not. If it's not, so then convert them convert all characters into the uppercase. And then once you see that the character leads to the backslash zero, so it will stop and go out from while loop to the end of this function. And then go back to the main function. And then you can get the result character. So the given or the original character or string will be like this, right? And the result after this function will be capitalized. Character and will be capitalized. This is the way that this function convert to uppercase does. Okay, that's all. So you can go back or you can um, try to write this function and check it out. And then if you don't understand about this, I will explain you again later. This one, the step. 21 to 24 will be quite complicated about how to um to step the string, but it's not that difficult. I will I will talk about this later. But you can just simply know that this function convert to uppercase, it is just to convert a string to all capitalized or uppercase. Okay, this is function that we didn't use the constant setting or stand array of character. So you can change the value inside the character or the string. This is what I'm going to say. Okay, and then, if you don't want to change, if you don't want to change, the character in SPTR. You have to use constant character, constant pointer. SPTR cannot modify the characters to which it points. Cannot, cannot modify. Okay, because we use constant. Okay, so this one is a pot function prototype. You have known already. Right. If you want to define the this function right after the main, right? So you have to define the pot function prototype first. Because when you call this function print character in main, so main function will understand that the print characters will return nothing or void, right? And then something here is, is a concern character or array of character. This program is just to print a string one can run character as a time using non constant pointer to constant data. Okay, we have non constant pointer, right? Non constant pointer is stop. Okay, in the loop, print character one at a time, right? You can just simply use for loop, right? And check for. It's similar to the while loop before, right? And this one step, one step we use plus plus SPGR. This is an incremental step, right? And then you can just simply print each character at a time. 
print F percent sign C, right? S P G R, but S P G R is star S P T R. In this function, we don't have to change any value in the setting S P G R, right? So you can use constant, constant modifier, constant qualifier, in order to address that you don't want to modify this SPTR or this string. Actually, character star SPTR itself is a string. Okay, before we can think it as a, oh, sorry. Before we think it as a string. Character SPTR like this. Actually, I think it as a character or array of SPTR is an array of character. This one, uh, these two, or uh, these two uh, statements are the same. And this one is a pointer variable SPTR can be modifiable. It's modifiable, but data to which it points to is not. Because it's just concern character. SPDR is modified by function printed print characters. What if we want to change attempting to modify data through a non constant pointer to constant data? Okay. If we define if constant integer and here x pointer right and then we pass ampersand y right f attempts to modify y right and in y right we try to change this one it's not possible pointer variable x PTR is modifiable, but data to which it points is not. And here, star x pointer x PTR has a constant qualifier. So attempting to modify this one is to assign 100 into x PTR, right? First x PTR is not possible, okay? So this is a special case, like if you want to write a program perfectly, that you sometimes you don't want to change the value of pointer, you don't want to change the data that the pointer points to, you can use constant. But this is the specific situation, right? If you are um, the normal C programmer, if you want just want to use pointer, then you can use, don't have to use constant, you don't have to use constant. Constant or S or C O N S T will be a in a specific situation. But if you want to be a master, you can try to understand about this, but up to now, I think it's not necessary. I just want to show that here because I want to show you all that we have the constant for specific, the, 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 the modifiable of mod, mod, uh, the character or the pointer modifica uh, modification, okay, that you use the constant pointer but you don't have to, okay, this one, you it cannot be compiled because the error. Okay, when now we have to know, we, we have known about the pass by reference, right? But we can, we can use this pass by reference to uh, perform the bubble sort. For example, if you want to sort a string, uh, a character of uh, a 
an array of character or an array of integer, you may have to use the bubble sort, which is very the, the, the easiest one, right, to understand. If you want to implement the bubble sort, right, by using pointer, you can just simply check for the two consecutive elements. If one is greater than the other one on the right, right, you have to swap from left to right, swap two elements. And then we can go on where right? we can do two loops in order to check until all of the value inside the array will be sorted. Or it is in ascending order, right? And you can use swap, right? Uh, I will show you where is the, 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 the bubble sort. I'm not sure if I can see this. Okay, suppose I have one, no, three, one, two, like this. Okay, what do bubble sort do? We check for two consecutive elements, three and one, three less than, three is greater than one, so one swap with three. We swap with three. Okay, and now we have two, three and two, two is less than three. So we swap three and two. See, this is what we call bubble sort. Bubble means a bubble, right? Bubble will be float, right? In this case, right? Uh, if three is greater than one and two, right, it will float up from left to right. So that's why we call bubble sort. Bubble sort will check for the two consecutive uh, elements, whether it is if left is greater than the right value, this one will be stopped, uh, will be swapped. Okay, this is the way that bubble sort you uh, does. We'll talk about the bubble sort again in the next semester, in the next semester in, in data structure course. Okay, and this one is the how to implement bubble sort by using pass by reference. This one is the bubble sort. Bubbles, bubbles out here is quite strange. It can uh, start from ascending, uh, in ascending order and also the in descending order as well, according to the function swap here. Okay, here I want to show you the, the way that we want um, the bubble sort can change. Okay, this one is an array of integer, right? Array of integer that is going to be sorted, right? Can be defined like this, right? And then if you want to sort this element, this array of integer, you can just simply put it A, right? A is an array of integer, just put A into this function bubble sort, and then you have to know the size of A, right? You have to, or uh, the, the function bubble sort, you have to know the size of A or array of integer, right? So you can sort it mm -hmm. very easy, okay? By using this function bubble sort, but in this way, I want to, uh, I want to show you about how to sort and how to uh, send the array of integer as a parameter here. Okay. I'm not going into detail about bubble sort, okay, because this one, this version is quite complicated. Maybe I will show you later about uh, the easier one, okay? Easier version of the bubble sort. 
okay? But here I want to show you that the bubble sort is a function that we can sort the array of integer, right? In the ascending order or the descending order, okay? But normally when you want to sort, you want to sort in ascending order alone, only, okay? So this is um, the, the application of the pass by reference and uh, pass array into the function. And the next topic that I'm going to say is that if you want to know the size of something, right? Sometimes I say that, what does it mean? What is uh, the number of the bytes for integer? If you want to know that you can just use this function size of, by right? size of, we return the size of the operand or the variable, or even for the type, right? For example, if you want to know the size of integer, you can just type size of integer, right? In this way, right? Size of integer equal to four bytes. If you have integer my array, array of 10 integers, when you print percent ID side of my array, it will be four multiplied by 10, which is 40 bytes. You can find the size of variable names, variable, a type name or constant value. Okay, that's all possible. For example, uh, variable names in size of Size of integer, size of 7.8, which is a floating point order double. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is an example of how to use a size of operator, right, to find the, the size of array. Right, size of the array of something will be all of, okay, this is one is float and array size will be 20. Float will be four multiplied by 20 will be 80. So that's why the array of the, the size, the number of bytes of this array is 80. And the size of the pointer to floating point will be four. One size to get size size of PGI PGI is a fourteen point fourteen point pointer. The pointer to fourteen point, so it is four. And this one, if you want to list of the size of type of the all types in C programming, so you can it can be shown like this. Okay, you can see this, I'm not going into detail about the size of the type that is listed in C programming. And the next topic is the pointer to a pointer expression and arithmetic, right? Suppose we have five elements in integer array like this, Right, with four bytes integer, right? VPTR, this is a vector pointer points to the first element V C zero. Actually, um, what I'm going to say is that um, if you have the pointer to an array, the pointer to an array VPTR will be the same as the address of the pointer V, P, T, R of the, the first element. For this example, the, this one is the first element of the array, right? And this one is the address of the first element of the array, right? If you talk about an array, right? An array is a pointer to the first element of that array. For this example, if V zero is at location V, a location 3000. So VPTR will be stored by 3000 as well. If you use uh, arithmetic operators like this, add it two bytes. So 
it means that it will step through array, through array, right? So it will be, because an integer will be four bytes, right? So this one will be go to three, 3008. So it means that this one is a pointer to the first, right? And plus two, plus two means one, two. So it will go to V2. But this one will be kept four bytes. This one is four bytes. So here will be 300, uh, 3008. That's why when you use V P uh, plus equal to, it will go to the array element V2. And the address will be 3008. Okay, this is a clear figure, right? When you define the pointer, right, of the array of five elements, right? So this one will be location 3000. And because this one will store four bytes, so the next V, the address of V1 will be 3004, 3008, 3012, and 3016, right? So this is the address of V0, V1, V2, V3, and V4, respectively. Okay? And when we move VPTR, VPTR plus plus, it will go to the next element, right? The first element will be here, pass pass will be here, and then pass pass will be here, pass pass will be here, like this. This is the way that the vector will do. Okay, when you add two, right? It will go to the third element. Okay. Once for VPTR, it will point to the first element. When you plus two, it will go to two. Zero plus two is two. You can see what? This is why we start the, the array at zero. This is why array, array of something, right? We will start the index at zero. When you plus, you see, you see, for the first element, it will be point two v zero, right? When we pass two, pass two means v two. If we point to v two, and pass one, if from v two we pass one, it will be v three. Okay, this is why array of integer will start the index from zero. We can also use subtracting as well, so subtracting pointer and also the pointer comparison as well, right? And if you want to, the pointer of the same types can be assigned to each other. You can assign the pointer of the same type, for example, the pointer to integer, you can assign to the pointer to integer as well. But if you, if not the same, right, you can cast operator by void first. You can use type void here. Y and star, okay, to cast operator or to cast the, 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 the address of different type. And the next topic that is a relationship between a pointer and array, because it's done out of time, I'm not going to talk about this, I will talk about this later. So I will let you go to the next because we have uh, a few slides for this topic, right? And that's, uh, th this topic is not that necessary as well. So I want to stop it here because you will have the next class in 10 minutes, right? Because thank you very much for your attention and then see you again in the afternoon, 1.30, every session, okay? Because PV today, my TA is not free today. So I will cover of the lab session. 
Okay, thank you very much and see you again in the afternoon, 1.30, every session again. Okay, bye-bye.